Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight series. My name is Tanner Bryan. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm sitting down with Julia Harrison, who is the owner of B Unica Interior Designs. Julia, thank you for taking the time to be here with me. I'm excited to jump into some conversation, have a little bit of fun here, talk about entrepreneurship around business, just in general, all that kind of fun stuff there. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, let's start with a little bit of background. If you would tell us a little bit about you and tell us about the business. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Julia Harrison and um, I'm the co-founder and lead designer here at the Unica Design and Build. I was born and raised in Brazil and that's kind of where my passion for design started as I watched my very creative dad and also very resourceful tackle projects around the house, what we know now as DIY, and um, often kind of helped him um, with those projects too. And then my mom, which was, is very organized and detail oriented um, and helping her keep up with the house. So that's kind of what started that sparkle. And the Unica is a fairly new business. Um, we founded the Unica at a very unexpected time. It was during the COVID pandemic. Um, we started as an interior design studio. And just this year, I partnered with a contractor and a good friend of mine. And we became the Unica Design and Built. So now we offer our clients a full personalized service. We are there from concept to execution, and we currently serve the Austin area with commercial and mostly residential, but a few commercial projects as well. Um, and we do have um, some long distance projects, including a commercial boutique that we did in Brazil in my hometown. So yeah. Very cool. I love all that. There's so much to kind of dive into here. Um, so started in, you know, in the midst of COVID. Uh, so a couple years in business now, uh, things sound like they've kind of grown and, and continue to, to build up in the business. Um, has that allowed you to kind of take on some additional team members at this point? Uh, what, what is, what is kind of the team look like? How many team members are you up to now? Okay. So, um, we started as a two person business, um, and, that was kind of crazy in the beginning because I had no idea how fast things would grow, especially because we were during COVID. So that was a lot of uncertainty during that time. But surprisingly, that's when we kind of boomed because everyone was staying at home and then they all all of a sudden started noticing things that they wanted to change in the house and then who had money saved or like crazy looking for interior design services to kind of change the space they were spending most of their time. So I didn't think that was when we were going to get most of our business, but that's exactly the time that we got a lot of projects and a lot of clients. And so since then, um, we have grown. Our team now has um, seven members. So we have, um, it's me, the lead designer. I have my partner, um, who's also our contractor. We have another designer, a design assistant, a project manager, and two drafters in Brazil. Yeah. So, Very cool. Yeah, I love that. Congratulations on that growth over the over that time period. Um, I always like to ask kind of the the general question of being in business. So you're lead designer, um, you've got team members on the team, uh, but it's a business. You know, how many different hats do you have to wear in the business? How many different roles do you currently, we'll say, get to play <laughs> at this time? Um, like, what, what are all the fun things that you get to do in the business? Yeah, so it's actually a lot. Um, we say, oh, want to be business owners because we don't want to have a lot of pressure and we want to have flexibility and be able to have our own schedule. But people don't realize until they're actually on the boat <laughs> um, that is not all flowers and, and all that. So um, I wear a lot of hats, especially before we had this form this team 
So when it was just the two of us, we were doing everything. So, um, and still, you know, it's a process. We train these people so they they work and, and perform kind of the way we expect um, and line up with the business. So it's it's a lot of work. I I. I used to design more. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I manage a lot more. Um, <laughs> but I still get the chance to, you know, be on the job sites and I do some shopping um, here and there for clients. And I sweep the job sites sometimes and clean and help install and, you know, hang our pieces. But I'm also, you know, um, sending taking care of the finance of the business and sending invoices and making sure um, finances are good and people are getting paid and we are getting um, paid, um, you know, designing, training my girls, um, collaborating. It's, it's a lot. Is there, uh, when, when you kind of look at uh, the kind of two ends of the spectrum, the first one being you know, of all the different things that you've gotten to do, is there, you know, one or two kind of roles within the business that you absolutely love? And if given the opportunity, you'll never hand those off. And then maybe the other side of the the equation here, like when you look at the things that you're doing, what's the next one to take off that as soon as you can give it to somebody else, like that's the first one to go. Okay. So I guess design is my passion. Um, I, I often tell my girls, gosh, I miss, you know, just sitting on the computer and building my 3D models and, you know, doing all that fun computer stuff and putting all the materials together and mood boards and it's so fun that that whole process, um, that I don't get to do a lot anymore. So that's something that I would tell if I had it, if I have the chance to once I can, you know, um, have other people wear the many hats that I'm wearing, then I'll just, I would love to go back to that. And then something that I can't wait to just pass the responsibility is finance. Yeah, I, that's not the fun part <laughs> for me. You know, that's funny. It's, uh, it's, I, I think that's probably one of the most common uh, ones that is not the fun part for most business owners that kind of get into it and enjoy kind of the, you know, the, the passion on why they started the business, that sort of thing. And I'm a weird. I feel like, like I'm on the creative spectrum. So, you know, all this numbers and it's not really my thing. <laughs> See, I'm on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. I love my numbers. Like I'll dive into the spreadsheets and all of that kind of stuff. But um, creative side, I leave that to to my son. He's like super creative. Uh, I don't know where he gets it, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, when let, let's go back to kind of the business a little bit. I'm curious, you know, when you look at who does, you, who does your business primarily serve? So kind of the way that I like to uh, kind of frame this up is if I'm in the audience and I'm watching this later on, how do I know that I'm a really good fit for y'all's services, or I might know somebody that I can refer over to you? Okay, so um, basically our business serves anyone that is looking to build, renovate, or just give a little update to their space. Ideally, I mean, um, there's all, client, all types of clients, and there are all, like, all types of design business. So, um, I feel like we want to work with people that understand and see value in the services that we provide and are open to honest feedback and that will trust our recommendations and take our advice. And as far as aesthetics, I mean, um, we love to work with clients that are bold and fun and open to different ideas. I love a challenge. So someone that won't mind getting out of their comfort zone and doing something unique. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, and, and this is kind of a, a perfect segue. I love to ask uh, at least a couple questions around marketing. It's one of those that, um, I don't know, marketing is super important for every business out there doesn't necessarily be, isn't necessarily the, uh, the topic that 
every business owner is fantastic at when they first get into business. Like, how do I actually get people to come into my business and, and, and want to buy my services? Um, so I always like to just kind of ask some questions around what you've found has worked or has not worked kind of along the way, or just in general, what has been y'all's philosophy to getting the word out there about, about your services and, and attracting the ideal clients to you? So, um, a lot of our clients come from referrals. Um, and that's mainly how we started. My former business partner, she was born and raised here, so she knew a lot of people in the community. And we got a lot of referrals from her. And um, eventually we had the opportunity to also work with a local blogger and influencer. And that's when um, social media played a big part in our referrals. So people would just see us and see what we were doing at um, this influencer's house. And then they would contact us and they would follow us. And then um, it's been probably almost two years or a year that we have finished the project and I still get clients like, oh, where, where did you hear about us? And they're like, oh, I saw you on um, this person's Instagram and I saved you and, you know, just now getting ready to renovate and would love to do a project with you. So um, Instagram definitely is a big tool and word of mouth. So I believe that we have to give our clients the best experience because they will, they will be um, kind of a free marketing tool for your business. If they have friends and family that will come and see and, oh my gosh, I love this and I love that. And when they're ready, they're going to remember that and they're going to look for you. I love that. I, I'm a firm believer in kind of referrals, word of mouth, that sort of thing. I absolutely love the kind of the influencer marketing piece that that was able to be tapped into there. Um, you know, it's it's almost like it's referrals on steroids. It's it's the here's the amazing work that we're doing. And it's it's very you know out there and people can see it. And that's like super cool. Um, so like maybe on the flip side, has there over the last you know couple of years, have you tried any any marketing that just didn't land that um, you decided tried it out went this this isn't working the way we want to let's continue to focus on the things that are working um, or maybe just in general any lessons that you've learned when it comes to marketing in general I I don't feel like I have explored enough of different marketing tools over the years um, mostly took advantage of social media. And I feel like that's something that I also want to focus more on because we, we do like, that's another hat that I wear here at the business. We do our own social media. I do the videos and I go to the job sites and I do the little videos. And then I gotta have, I gotta find the time to post and, you know, interact and do all that. And I don't do that as often as I would like. So I know that I'm kind of missing out and there's so much more potential to explore on social media. Um, you know, TikTok is so big these days and, you know, there's a lot of older clients that are on Facebook and I don't really do a lot of Facebook. So I feel like there's still a lot of tools that I can explore. Um, but I mean, I've even thought about maybe doing some cool flyers and like dropping off at some neighbors, neighborhoods. Like there are neighborhoods that we have four or five clients. Mm. And so I'm like, oh, maybe, and that's an idea that I haven't done yet, but I'll, I'm planning on it. <laughs> but like, I'm like, well, maybe I'll just, you know, it, they're kind of used the builder grade type of home. So everyone mm -hmm. kind of looks the same. And we go and we customize it. So I'm like, oh, I'll take some pictures. And then I'm kind of build a flyer for this specific demographic. And then just kind of, they can see, oh, my house could look like this. And then just focus on, you know, the different 
type of customers or the area or the demographic or, you know, these are some marketing strategies that I would like to explore. I have the ideas. I just need to have the time. <laughs> to I love it. I love it. Yeah. Those are um, phenomenal. I, I mean, just the, the way that you kind of laid that out there, like for those that are watching this, that are, um, have something that maybe is a little bit more visual in terms of kind of their product or service. Um, some of the things that you've shared so far, like rewind, go back, take some of these notes on here and, and start implementing. Um, Julie, I'm excited to see all of that kind of go into place for you over the next, you know, hopefully a few months and, and things like that and see how that's going to work out. Cause I, totally aligned like that sounds absolutely amazing and, and i'm excited yeah, to see how that works out excited too. uh so let, let's talk about the the future a little bit i mean uh where where do you see things go in the next three to five years how does how does the business continue to grow and, and what's it look like as as you kind of look towards the future i mean i feel like i'm a very ambitious person so to me you know the sky's the limit <laughs> And um, I, I have a lot of ambitious and crazy ideas for my business that I hope will become a reality in the next three, five years. Um, uh, I always had this entrepreneur spirit with me. I mean, I guess both my parents own their own business. So I'm always kind of looking for opportunities within my industry industry to kind of do different things um i'm starting a little bit of a shop where i try to find unique um items decor items or you know accessories and things like that related to my business um and then we'll have i travel to brazil a lot so if i go and find some you know handmade plate or you know vase or an art piece and then I, I'm bringing these items and sourcing them um, to the places that I go and travel to and then just kind of starting this shop um, of unique kinds. Um, we don't have an online shop yet but that's something that's on the plans too. We currently just have it here at our office and we display the things that our clients come, they can see and, you know, find something or can be a gift or it can be something they can use in their house. Um, but yeah, and, you know, get feature, get a project featured in a magazine, um, well-known magazine would be really cool. Um, getting larger custom home projects, I mean, uh, I love working with clients, but I'm also like right now exploring um, the more de developed side of this business um, where we just kind of come up with these big plans with this unique and super custom home and then introduce that to people and then someone is going to love as much as we do and hopefully buy it. <laughs> So yeah, many plans, many ideas, and a lot to work on for sure. Well, I love it, and I would imagine so. When it comes to you know looking three to five years out, uh, you know there's there's a lot that can be accomplished in a time frame that long. So excited to see some of that continue to come to fruition. I love the the shop side of things. Like that just sounds amazing to kind of pull some unique things together. Um, but you know. I don't think I mentioned, but the, the name be Unica. Unica is unique in Portuguese. So um, the name reflects the idea that I have for the business, which is creating unique spaces. And, you know, just like each, of, each one of us is unique. Mm. And just translating that to our project. It is so cool. I absolutely love that. Um, well, Julie, I know we've covered a kind of ton of ground so far in the conversation. I want to uh, kind of move us to, uh, as we start to wrap up, we've got kind of four rapid fire questions, just kind of top ahead answers best we can on these okay. and kind of just have some additional fun things for, for the audience. So the first one is when you look back at your, your journey so far, so you kind of just look at your journey. Um, what would you say is kind of your key to success? 
Um, I think success comes from a combination of things, not yes. necessarily just one thing. But if I have to mention one, I think it would be courage. Um, a lot of times I hear people saying, oh my gosh, you, I can't believe you did that, or can you, you know, and people are just afraid of trying and they are afraid of failing and they're afraid of starting over. So they will never succeed. So you gotta have courage and have the guts. And, and I say that a lot, I'm like, well, if I fail, then I'll just think of something else. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's a uh, failure is what that first step in learning that sort of thing. Like there's, I think that courage is a, is a very important component of, of really any journey in life, but especially in business and entrepreneurship. And there's so many things that come along with it. Um, so let, let's kind of shift the question a little bit to, to, I guess the second rapid fire question is if you could only give just one piece of advice for other business owners out there, what piece of advice would you give them? Um, I think I would encourage them to keep going, to persevere and be persistent because building a business is not an easy task. There are days that, um, we'll question ourselves and, you know, sometimes I ask like, should I really be doing this or should I just quit and go to and go work to um, go work at a retail furniture store or whatever and, and just have the peace of mind that I'm going to have a paycheck at every end of the month and then I will have my regular amount of hours that I will know if I'll work, uh, I'm, I'm going to work and then, you know, I can't tell you how many times I'm like, I think I'm just going to quit. And then, but there's, when you have this passion and when you um, remember like yourself, why you started it, I feel like you can, you can find that strength to keep going and to keep accomplishing and, you know, just got to celebrate every little thing um, because it's, it's, it's a combination of small things that it, it's going to make you great, right? So accomplish every little thing. Oh my gosh, I was able to hire another person to help me. Wow, that's incredible. Oh, I was able to purchase this software that is going to help my business. How incredible is that? Like we've got to celebrate our accomplishments because that will reassure us that we're going in the right direction and then will keep us motivated to keep going. I love that. That is such great advice. Um, what is, uh, what's one book that either you've read most recently or are currently reading that you would recommend to the audience? Okay. Um, I'm actually reading a book that is whatsoever not related to any of this conversation. Fantastic. Um, I'm reading a book called Reversing Diabetes because um, I was recently, um, I recently learned that I'm pre-diabetic, pre-diabetic. And so I um, started reading this book and trying to learn new habits for myself that will help me. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I, I, I absolutely love when we have, you know, recommendations that are not specific to business or things like that. We get a ton of those. So, you know, it's, it's okay to read things that are not inside business. Uh, so uh, I, I think I've had uh, maybe once I've had a, someone that actually recommended a nonfiction book uh, or a, excuse me, a fiction book, an actual like novel. And I was like, that's fantastic. Let's get more of these. Um, let's get the, the reading list built out in so many different ways. Got to learn yeah. different things. It's fun. Um, all right. Final rapid fire question. And this one's just kind of fun. If you could choose only one area in your business, you only get to choose one area or you can take a little bit of magic dust and you can just sprinkle it all over that one area in the business and you wake up tomorrow and it's like 10 times better than it is today. Where would you choose to put that magic dust? Oh my gosh. Um, that is hard. Um, 
one area that I could improve, I feel like it would probably be um, building the relationship with the client. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's very important. And just being able to relate and understand the client deeper um, so we can we can like connect and that can allow us to create something like that will exceed and blow their mind. I mean, we try to do that, but it would be so nice if I were able to read their mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's the, you know, there's, there's a lot to be said about communication, like overall. Um, so no, I absolutely love that answer. Uh, but before we get into kind of the, the final easier um to build a connection but you have some people that you know it's a it's a little bit different and harder and we just gotta learn that as we experience and meet people um so if there was a magic one that could just you know allow me to have this <laughs> power it would be wonderful <laughs> that is phenomenal um, so before we get to the final question to wrap up kind of everything here today, for those that are watching that want more information, that want to check out the amazing projects that y'all have been doing, um, that want to follow the work that you're doing or just connect with you in general, um, where can we advise them to go for more information? So we're currently working on updating our website, but in the meanwhile, you can follow us on Instagram and check our projects, photos, updates that we post on our stories. And if they're interested in receiving a, a welcome pack with more information on our company and um, our services, um, you can send us a DM on Instagram or an email to home at the uniqueinteriordesign.com. Beautiful. I will make sure to put all of that in the video description below. So make sure you take a moment, at least give them a follow, check it out. Send, I highly recommend send them a, a direct message and just say, Hey, saw you on the business spotlight. Amazing stuff. Excited to see more things. Uh, just you know, do that. The, the connection piece is, is so much fun here. Uh, so Julia, as we wrap up, final question for you today is what is most inspiring to you today? Wow, that's deep. <laughs> um, I feel like there's a lot of things that inspire me, um, mostly people. Um, and their life experiences. Um, but in my business, a lot of the inspiration comes from my culture. Um, so Brazil, where I was born and raised. Um, I've been here only, you know, six years. So I still find a lot of my inspiration for my projects and even for my business model um, back home. And um, I feel like I'm very lucky to have this second perspective. And um, I don't know, I feel like it's a way that, um, it helps me take advantage um, of being able to experience two different cultures and two different ways of doing business and just kind of getting the best of here and the best there and combining them to something amazing. So. That is so cool. Julia, thank you for taking the time. This has been an absolute pleasure uh, and a lot of fun to, to hear a bit more about your story and the amazing work that y'all are doing. Well, thank you for having me, and it's been a pleasure.